What's up guys, welcome to another video. If you are looking at getting into 3D printing or maybe you already have a printer, one of the first things that you realize is just how long it takes to print pretty much anything. Really, I would say it took me a few months to get comfortable with the things that I'm gonna talk about in this video. But once I did, I definitely increased the frequency at which I printed things mainly because I could just print a lot more things in a much shorter amount of time. If you are experienced in the 3D printing world, this video probably won't be for you, mainly because I'm probably just gonna tell you things that you already know. Duh. <laughs> but with that being said, let's get into it. If you've ever felt frustrated by how long it takes to finish a print, you're not alone. One of the biggest challenges with 3D printing is the time that it takes to finish a project or a print. But in this video, I'm gonna share five essential tips that I've learned over the last year and a half with printing that has significantly decreased the amount of time it takes to finish a print. I should also note that you can print things a lot faster and also sacrifice the quality that comes with it. Uh, so these tips that I'm gonna share with you are ways to maintain quality and print faster. The first tip that I've learned from personal experience that drastically increases print time and is something that if you're just starting out you may not be too familiar with is layer height. Layer height is one of the most significant settings that can drastically change the time it takes to print something. And when I say layer height, I'm referring to the thickness of each individual layer of your print. For example, the more layers that you need, which would equal a thinner layer height, uh, would equal a longer print time. Printing with a layer height of 0.3 millimeters uh, would be significantly faster than printing with a layer height of 0.1 millimeters. This would decrease the total amount of layers that it would take to finish the print and therefore equaling less time to finish the print. However, something to keep in mind when you move to a thicker layer height is that you will also lose the resolution of your print, meaning more layer lines will be visible uh, and for prints that you'd like to have higher amounts of detail, uh, this would not be the route to go. You would need to do a smaller layer height uh, to have that resolution that you're looking for. So how do you find the right balance between the two? Uh, let's just say you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is the most common nozzle type. Typically the lowest you would go is 0.1 millimeters and the highest at 0.3 millimeters. So how do you find the balance between these two? If you're printing a prototype or a model, um, some sort of tool, something like that where it doesn't need to look very good, it just needs to serve a purpose, uh, I would most definitely go with the higher layer height range at 0.3 millimeters. However, on the other hand, if you're printing something that needs a higher resolution, you could go all the way down to 0.1 millimeters. This is gonna take more time and increase your print time, uh, but it would be worth, if you, if you want it to look good, to have that lower layer height. It should also be said that if you want something that is stronger, uh, that uh, if it's something that's functional that you're using on a daily basis, it's been said that larger layer heights, closer to 0.3 millimeters, provide that extra strength. So for tip number two, let's talk about print speed. Speed, I'm speed. Print speed is exactly what it sounds like, and this may be one of the first things that you experiment with when you first get your printer. However, it can also be the most deceiving. And what I mean by that is a higher print speed does not equal uh, better quality or equal quality to a lower print speed. And while this is completely dependent on your printer, um, all printers kind of have a left and right boundary on what print speed they operate best at. Print speed, like all of these other settings, are adjusted in your slicer, uh, whatever that may be. And it might be tempting to crank your print speed up to the highest maximum speed that it can go. However, this is probably when you're gonna start facing quality issues, um, such as not layers not adhering properly, or layer lines or you know just all of the different problems that come with higher print speeds. Obviously a good rule of thumb if you're just starting out with a specific printer is to check what the manufacturer's recommended print speed is for that printer. However if you're just starting out and you've already found what that is, um, a good way to test how uh, fast you can print something without experiencing quality issues is every print you do increase by 10 to 20 percent um, when you are slicing in your slicer settings um, and and then observe take notes as you print those things uh, and if they start having quality issues then you can start dialing it back 10 to 20 percent to your previous set print speed rolling into the third step is infill density and the pattern that you use for your infill infill is the internal structure that is created in your slicer settings so that your print has integrity 
um, and that it has a structure after it prints. Reducing the infill can greatly uh, reduce your print time. However, also reducing the infill uh, makes your print weaker. For many prints, a 10 to 20% infill uh, will do the job. However, if you're printing functional tools, uh, things that are gonna be largely relied on for their strength, sometimes 100% infill is the way to go. Depending on your print, and only you can answer this question, um, you can experiment with the infill to, to best determine how fast it's going to print. If you are just starting out and you have a tiny little print and it says it's gonna take eight hours to print and use 80, 90, 100 grams of filament, uh, it's best to check your infill settings because this is probably incorrect for what you need. And if you increase it from 100% infill all the way down to 15 or 20% infill, you'll see that eight hours uh, drastically change, probably down to more like an hour and a half or two hours, uh, which will greatly save you filament, time, and the money that it takes to run the printer um, and pay for the filament. Tip number four is to use a larger nozzle diameter. Now this is something that I don't really have a whole lot of personal experience with. I have larger diameter nozzles, um, but I haven't really printed them, uh, printed anything with them that I've used on a daily basis. I haven't experimented a whole lot with them. So this is something that I'm throwing in here because if you're printing larger based items that uh, you're not really worried about the weight, you just need to make the item, it needs to be printed. Uh, definitely consider looking into larger nozzle diameters such as 0.6 or 0.8. Uh, usually the default is 0.4 when it comes with your printer, uh, but basically what it means when you have a larger nozzle diameter is it's extruding more filament at one time. Uh, what this means is that you can go for much larger layer heights, which is what we discussed in the first tip, um, and it will also drastically decrease the amount of time it takes to print things uh, that are larger. Note that with a larger nozzle diameter, you're going to lose pretty much all of your resolution. Not all of it, but a good portion of it uh, that you would have received with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, but it's definitely something to look into if you're printing larger, larger items. The final tip is to optimize travel moves and retraction settings. Travel moves are the movements that your extruder makes uh, when you are not extruding material. Optimizing these, as in increasing this, this travel speed, um, will also contribute to a faster print time. And this is something for a whole nother video, but retraction settings are extremely important when it comes to stringing and optimizing the quality of your print. Every time your printer prints a layer, uh, it will use these retraction settings to determine how much it's going to suck the filament back up into the tube before starting the next layer. And in some cases, when you have zero retraction, uh, it will create an, a crazy amount of stringing and just make your print look terrible. And there you have it, five essential tips to optimizing your print speed without sacrificing quality. To recap, the five tips that we went over were one, optimize your layer height, two, increase print speed incrementally, three, adjust infill density and pattern, four, use a larger nozzle diameter when appropriate, and five, optimize travel moves and retraction settings. By making these adjustments, you can significantly reduce your print times and and get your projects done faster remember it's all about finding the right balance uh, between speed and quality uh, when adjusting these settings and trying to print faster thanks for watching if you've gotten anything out of this video please consider subscribing uh, for more 3d printing content and projects that i'm sure i will find myself getting into let us know in the comments if you have any specific questions or if there's any projects that you want to see uh, I have been posting shorts pretty frequently with a bunch of different printing projects that I've been getting into um, and I will be looking forward to making videos for those specific projects uh, as they come up. Once again, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.